Why is the concept of interest flawed? It is in this time of recession where there is zero growth and no positive movement in the economy. It is evident how cancerous and dreadful interest is. Interest expects that there will always be a positive movement in the market over a period of time, irrespective of the performance of the economy. The bank gives you money and starts charging interest from the very moment you receive the money, no matter how the money lent performs. The very reason there exists the concept of time value of money is because of interest. There is always an expectation from the money that it provides minimum fixed return over time. Rather, interest becomes a base for comparing different investment options. Any investment which provides higher return than interest over time seems profitable. It means that over time there has to be a minimum positive growth in the market to the extent of interest. Now, what if there is no positive return from the market? What if the market fails to outperform the interest expectations? As a holder of an interest yielding bond, you might see this as a profitable investment, as your return is greater than others. But what about the economy as a whole? Is it equally benefiting from the concept of interest? Interest creates an imbalance between receivables and payables. The interest payments are to be made irrespective of the fact that your business does not make money. The problem with this is that there is inequality between GDP and money supply in the economy. GDP in simple words means the value of goods and services in the economy. Every running business that produces a good or provides service forms part of GDP. Whenever there is a slowdown in the economy and there is no production of goods and services to generate income and a way is to be figured out to pay this unavoidable interest payments, often a way out is taking additional loans or printing more money. Where additional loans prolongs the slowdown, printing more money causes inflation. Now, how does printing more money cause inflation? Excessive money printing without having resources to back it up means that the economy has effortless money, which means that the economy didn't have to make any contribution to GDP to create this excessive money. This excessive money via banks passes on to the common people. Now the people have excessive money where there is still no production in the economy. There will be a surge in demand for the limited goods available in the economy. It is as if there is a store. The worth of goods in it is $100 and you want to make a purchase of $110. Store represents GDP and your money represents money supply in the economy. The owner of the store, unable to fulfill the excess demand of $10 in such a short time, changes the price of these goods from $100 to $100 so that the demand falls as demand falls whenever there is an increase in price. In other words, the value of money reduces. What $100 was capable of buying previously, it is no longer capable to buy now. This is what is called inflation, where the value of goods and services increases and the value of money decreases. The hyperinflation of 1923 in Germany is a clear description of such phenomena, where the war was funded using borrowings and when they could not afford to repay, they started printing more money without resources to back it up. The currency became so useless that you can see in this picture children using money to make kites. So the bottom line here is, whenever there is an imbalance between receivables and payables, the economy will have to figure out a means to fill the gap. And as long as there is an expectation of return solely based on time, there will always be a creation of payables over time, irrespective of the performance of the economy, which will cause the economy to fall in the trap of filling the gap again and again. And when it comes out of this trap, it comes out with increased prices. The actual victim of this are the daily wage earners and salaried employees whose income gets exhausted as soon as they receive it and cannot afford to accumulate and keep it in the banks to earn interest. These people do not earn income over time but have to face the increased price. We can safely claim that interest makes the rich richer and the poor poorer.